Hello there and welcome back once again to another edition of Silly Car Showdown. Today we are taking a look at the brand new BMW Z4. Uh, this car was requested by Lucifer Sam and it is one of the hottest cars in the new car scene at the moment. Of course this came into Forza recently as part of recent as the time I'm recording. I'm not sure how recent when this goes out as part of the Spring Season 7 rewards for doing 50% in the festival playlist. It's a car which I actually quite like uh, a lot, more than I like most BMWs. I'm not much of a BMW person, uh, you've probably gathered that if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, but uh, for some reason I'm really taken uh, to the new Z4. I think it looks really really cool. Um, I'm a big fan of the way this thing looks, I'm a big fan of the way it drives as well. I actually found myself driving this uh, stock quite a lot, but of course we're not here to drive its stock today. Instead, we're here to put a silly engine in it and see what happens to it when it goes around our Edinburgh cores. And thankfully, uh, we do have an armada of engines. We have the 4-litre V8, which is the first time I've seen this, uh, for an E9 from an E92 M3. Uh, it's in a couple of other BMWs, but I believe this is this is our second BMW, so I don't think we've seen this one yet. Uh, we have the 6.2-litre V8, which of course is the uh, Mercedes one, sorry, not the Chevrolet one. Uh, that goes in a few of the German cars, and then most interestingly of all, we have the 5 litre V10, which comes courtesy of a BMW E60 M5, which we're going to go with. Of course, one of the most unreliable engines ever made, uh, but this is fault, so we don't really have to care about reliability. As usual, in accordance with this series rules, uh, fault to aero is not allowed on the Z4, so it's going to run as it has brung. Right, race tyres go on, uh, 285s on front, ooh, that, they're very nice, and 315s on the rear. This could turn out to be a rather quick car, actually. And those tyres are pretty good. Considering this isn't going to be a mad power build, I say mad, it's probably going to end up with about 900-ish horsepower, which, trust me, as far as Silly Car Showdown goes, not really that mental. So, uh, yeah, I, that's why I'm sort of downplaying that a little bit. It's still quick, don't get me wrong, but it's not quite what it could be. Uh, the race springs, mm, the front fitment's still not quite to my standards, but I'll just leave it as is because, oh well. Uh, we are going to want the roll cage, which is going to add a little roll bar to the roll bars that are already there. Nice. Uh, of course, this is rear-wheel drive as well. No drivetrain swaps are allowed in this series. I haven't said that for a while. Uh, I'm sure people probably gathered that. Uh, right, let's start putting some power into the Z4 and see what PI we're going to go up to. I'm imagining low S2 class is going to be the setting point for the Z4. It is still gaining PI though when we're putting the power bits in, which is quite nice. S2 910, S2 909, S2 908, and then finally we are going to end at S2 909. Uh, 911 horsepower, 661 foot pan torque, 2,884 pounds of weight, 3.4 seconds 60, 246 miles an hour top speed. I have a sneaking suspicion this may be a sleeper hit around our course. I think this one may actually do a lot better than many people would think uh, a BMW Z4 would. You know, it's not mad on power, it's not madly lightweight. But I think it definitely has potential to be very, very quick indeed. Of course, there's only one way to find out if it's going to be quick around our course, and that's by actually taking it to our course. Let's head there. Well, here we are at the Silly Car Showdown course with the new BMW Z4 ready to set five laps to see what the quickest time we can get out of it is. Our current leader is the Ferrari Baghini Hurkan V12 GT, that's at a time of 1.35.743. The Z4 is unlikely to beat that. The question is, where is it going to end up? Woohoo! Woo! We have nice turning. Um, so, something worth pointing out just before we get into this. Uh, you might notice the livery on this car, the Falcon livery. Uh, I got some new tyres today, but you can't tell who makes them. Anyways, um, if you ever want to give yourself an aneurysm or a reason to hate yourself or, you know, start self harming, you know, whatever you want to get into. Uh, feel free to have a look at the liveries for the BMW Z4, because, trust me, it's a, it's a bad idea. Very bad ideas. You know the one joke that always gets made against this car? Yeah, that. Uh, it pops up quite a lot. Ooh. 
But right now, I don't really care about that because something is quickly occurring to me. This is an exquisite driving car. Like, Jesus Christ. It's surprisingly nice. Um, you know what I said about this being a sleeper hit? I think this may very well be just that. It feels absolutely fantastic to drive. It turns in really nicely, rear end doesn't kick around all that much. He says as he gets a giant tail. I mean, it is still rear wheel drive at the end of the day. A rear wheel drive will always uh, have that issue, but from what I'm driving of it right now, it feels absolutely phenomenal to drive. Really, really excellent car uh, to just get in and uh, chuck around. A 146.880 is its opening gambit. That is very quick indeed. Uh, considering, you know, granted it is, it's not entirely without merit, of course, you know, it is a very low S2 class car, but, considering it's a BMW, which historically usually means say hello to the rear end, because it's about to meet the front end, uh, unintentionally, this feels very solid to drive, very, very, very solid to drive. Uh, I'm very impressed so far with the Z4's driving dynamics. Uh, of course, you know, that's without not properly pushing the car just yet. I've uh, got to try and find its limits. Straight line speed, not massively impressive, it has to be said. Um, you know, 153, 155 down there. It's slightly above average, but it's nothing to write home about particularly. That being said, uh, it is still quite good, no denying that. In fact, with its opening gambit being 146.880, you've got to bear in mind as well, this is a real-world drive car. It takes a while to get off the line, so uh, this lap is going to be quite a bit quicker than that. I am very impressed. Again, you might call me slightly stupid for, you know, being like, oh my god, this S2 class car is slightly quicker than some bottom end S1 class cars, or is like nearly, but again, context here. It, it, look at the fucking conditions. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah, it's, it's very nice. I'm starting to get a little bit stupid with it, but so far, so good. Apparently that lap was... I think I clipped a curb or something and that sort of messed that one up a bit. Ooh, a bit messy coming into this first section. Really tricky section, that. Uh, it looks quite smooth. and once you, If you can pull that section off, it's awesome. If you can't, however, that's where you get your issues. Speaking of getting your issues, I'm starting to find the one thing with the Z4 doesn't like the curbs, really does not like the curbs around here. Can't say that's hardly surprising, it's a low slung sports car on very firm suspension. And while it's not, you know, super light, it's still relatively light, it still doesn't weigh that much more than a ton. So, yeah, that's kind of understandable. The V10 engine itself is alright, um, it's not quite as punchy as you'd expect it to be. There's also, I noticed this, I was sort of driving it around while I was waiting for the lobby to load up. There is a fair bit of turbo lag low down in this engine, so uh, make sure you have the right gear in this engine, just to get the maximum out of it, because those twin turbos do take a while to uh, spool up. It is worth pointing that out, did not want to do that. I mean, we're still on for a relatively quick time, but still. I don't want this to be one of those cars that I accidentally end up holding back, because I do genuinely think uh, that the Z4 could really be something. I'm kind of aiming towards that uh, the Viper-powered Mustang right now, the Fox Box. Uh, I think that was a 146.4 uh, is sort of what I'm aiming. I didn't really say what I was aiming towards. To be honest with you, this is more... I just sort of wait and see, I guess. Apparently I'm getting slower each lap I do. I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but... Maybe this is one of those cars, and I have had these in the past, where the more you try and push it, the more the car sort of fights back against it. It sort of just wants you to drive it naturally. Take it slow, take it easy. Um, let the car do the work. You know, it's one of those cars that doesn't like to be pushed and rushed. It likes to do its thing and do its thing rather well. But yeah. 
just in general, it feels very nice, though. Uh, a lot better than I was initially expecting. With Forza Hero, this thing could be uh, very, very good indeed. Of course, can't run it as part of the series, but I'm surprised it's taking to this much power as well as it is. I mean, obviously, you know, it's a new car chassis, with a roll cage no less. It's pretty stiff, it's pretty structurally sound, despite being convertible, of course. But it's still surprising me just sort of how eager it is, how well proportioned, how nice feeling it is. It does have some issues with some bumps though, uh, there is no denying that. Especially those weird sort of pothole things that we constantly find cars getting affected by on this series for whatever reason. Uh, it does seem to get bounced around by those quite badly, so that's something worth bearing in mind. Brakes feel pretty average, uh, yeah, average to good. Nothing really to write home about, but at the same time, uh, nothing to complain about. Alright, final lap with the Z4, get her in a straight line, this is going to be quicker. 145.4, uh, that is very quick indeed, actually. We try bringing it down a peg for here. First section does struggle with a little bit. Rear-wheel drive cars often do, though, so I'm not too worried about that. If you're rear-wheel driving heavy through that first section, you really are not having a fun time. Just any car in general that doesn't really like that first section. It is very tight and twisty. One of the twistiest parts of the uh, entire track we have set up. Definitely prefers this sort of section where it's able to uh, stretch its legs and run free a little bit. Speaking of running free, uh, the more I'm coming down here, the ah, fuck those bins are probably scraped. Yeah, bollocks, cock. That's definitely hurt it through that section because it was hitting about 160 through there. That being said, though, I'm happy with that 145. If that 145 four is all I can get out of this, I am happy with that. I do genuinely think I could get it at 145 flat, given no mistakes, but it's just. You know, little tiny things. Again, for fuck's sake. Well, that's the end of that. But a 145.4 is still very bloody impressive. Uh, f especially for a rear-wheel drive car. Uh, but yeah, as I said, you know, it's one of those cars where I, I... It really does not like to be pushed. I think it just wants to take... I think it wants to do what it wants to do. Very much like a modern car in that aspect, you know. It's basically like, hey, leave me to the driving. You just enjoy me, you know. But it, 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 I definitely slightly disappointed because I do think there is a 145 flat in there. But you know, a 145 473, I will definitely take that. That's you know a second quicker than what I thought. Uh, you know, this car was going to be at its max. You know, I was honestly expecting this to be around the Cayman 148.2, but uh, no, a 145.4 for the new BMW Z4. Uh, a very impressive car. I do recommend giving this one a go uh, if you haven't already with this uh, V10 engine in it especially. It's uh, surprisingly composed, just again, don't push your luck. Don't do what I did. Don't try and force this car to do anything it's not comfortable with. Just let it, let it drive you. Let it let you enjoy it. Anyways, a 145, uh, 473 will put it into a bit of the null void between the Heretic Impreza and the Hawkeye Impreza. Uh, it will put it into 12th place. It is about two and a half seconds off of the Impreza V8, but bear in mind that's an Impreza with a V8 engine, uh, which has more power than this and weighed less and blah 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 blah. Uh, it's quicker than the Hawkeye Impreza, which is a very impressive car. Uh, it is half a second quicker than the GT40 EcoBoost. Almost an entire second quicker than the Fox Body Mustang. Very impressive. Very, very, very impressive is the BMW Z4. Um, yeah, I, I'm pleased because, again, out of pretty much all the modern BMWs, this is by far and away my favourite. Uh, probably my favourite BMW since the M135i, to be honest with you. Uh, but there you go. Anyways, thank you all very much for watching. If you'd like to request cars for Silly Car Showdown, you can do so down below in the comment section, because that's what they're there for. Alternatively, if you go down below in the description, or at least on my video or my channel, 
um, you will get a link to my Discord server. If you join that, you can post your requests in the request chat. That is a 100% guaranteed way to make me see them, because I'm in here. If you're watching this on HG Central and join me, my name's Emil. I occasionally mince words when I try to speak really fast, which I do occasionally, but I can't actually say a single word of English, which really means this comes out as complete gibberish. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, farewell. Thank <laughs> you.